Okay, so we worked on a sphere that has a nice smooth texture on it. Um, and then now we're going to work on one that has some fuzz um, for texture. So that's going to be a tennis ball. Um, but for this tennis ball, I'm not going to paint the grooves and the branding mark. I'm just going to use this tennis ball as a light and color reference and a texture reference. So um, again, let's begin first with studying this ball. And what we can see is that the light is strongly coming from this side of the ball. Uh, I guess that's sunlight. And then um, we have a very strong shadow over here. There's still some reflected light, but it's um, pretty diffuse. Um, and you don't have any pinpoint highlights or very, you don't have prominent highlights because of the fuzzy texture of the ball, um, which causes the ball to be not so reflective. That's pretty much it. The, um, the core shadow is not so um, deep because the light is pretty much all around the ball. Um, so there's a lot of refle reflected light coming from the back as well. I think we can start painting. Um, so for our palette from the last sphere that we did, we already added a few um, colors to our palette. So we, we started with Payne's Gray for our monochromatic spheres, the gray and white spheres. Um, but now we're going to need some primaries, okay? So any yellow, red, and blue that you have um, around should do. Um, we don't want to get any more complicated than that. And again, you just use your round brush that you have. Okay, so just because I do have the option, I'm going to switch this Hansa yellow which is a warmer kind of yellow, for a cadmium yellow, which is closer to the tennis ball yellow. It's a cooler yellow. Um, I'm going to do that just because I have the option, but if you don't have an alternative yellow, that's fine. Use what you have. And I just don't want you to stress out too much about having the specific kind of yellow that uh, I'm using. Okay, so what's the first thing we do again? We're going to, of course, paint water onto the surface area. So I can paint the entire ball yellow because there is no bright white highlight on this ball. That's beautiful. Really beautiful yellow. Tennis ball yellow. So note how I said, so how I referred to this cadmium yellow as kind of a cooler yellow because it tends more towards the green and the blue. If you look at it, while the Hansa yellow, it tends more, it, it um, leaning more towards orange. And the next color that I'm going to paint in here is, I think it will have to be our red into this area over here. Oh wait, let me consider this first. All right, because we have a green over here, deeper green, and then we have that reddish brown 
which is uh, reflected light coming from the floor. Um, so I have to decide if I'm going to paint the red first or the blue first, which is going to turn this area green, or I might mix that. So I, um, because the red is slightly lighter, I'm going to start with that. I might already mix that with some yellow. And it's about half. So very light, just keep it very light. And if you need to test how much pigment and how much water you have on your brush, use a scrap piece of paper. So I'm trying to, to see if I can already kind of give a hint of that fuzzy texture by changing the stroke that I'm doing over this ball. Um, I don't know if it will work, but this is a exercise meant for learning things and experimenting with things, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we are, again, watch the shape that the color is making. So use your reference photo as a guide for that. Uh, and then I want to start with some of that darker green, so let's mix that. That looks good. Test it. A little bit more yellow. So keep it light to start. It's not really light, but okay. And over here, it kind of gets lighter again over here, so thin out that green that you're using. So I'm kind of figuring out how to create this fuzz texture as I'm going. So let's see how this works out. Hmm, I'm thinking if I should just go ahead and paint that groove anyway. Um, no, um, I'm just gonna keep doing this like a fuzzy ball without the groove because this exercise isn't really about those details just yet Okay, so what I'm doing is kind of, I'm kind of blending this green into that reddish orange. Um, and we are starting to see that tennis ball texture coming through. Let's do some stronger blue over here. Oops, too dark.
So it's a different kind of blending this time because I'm kind of stippling in the paint. It still creates, um, you know, you're still coloring the surface, but you're allowing these little breaks of um, lighter color to show through, and that, that makes a big deal for creating the texture. I'll go back to my Hansa, uh, my cadmium yellow and work this up. All right, I like that. And we are uh, going to go deep orange. I'm gonna mix an orange and start stippling that in. It's too wet so I'll dry that and keep going. Okay, and towards the middle here, it goes towards a deeper red on more kind of a brown even. Don't want to do that too intense though, so... And again, we're watching the shape that the color makes. So the shape of this um, orange or orangey brown color that I'm painting in is it goes like it goes like a teardrop here and then there, and that's what I'm seeing on my reference photo, and that's what I'm trying to recreate. So this red is the, I guess that's the clay color of the tennis court um, that's reflecting back onto the tennis ball. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because I decided not to do the groove, you probably won't be able to tell that that's a tennis ball. That's okay. That's okay. Bit more yellow this time. We're going to go up to here. And we're going to work in another, um, green again. Ultramarine blue with some green. I'm gonna keep going with this green color into the yellow, but now the strokes will be more spread apart. And just softening it with some water. And back to orange. A 
little bit more orange paws here. That's good. Let's go deeper brownish red here. And at this time, the brush is pretty dry. Uh, there's just enough water on here to help me do those small strokes, but nothing more than that. If I, yeah, if I had that groove here, it, it would be obviously much, yeah, it, it would more obviously be a tennis ball. Um, and I'm kind of tempted to do that. But no, we won't. We won't. Just keep going with this. We might have to repeat this. Once this dries, it's going to look very light, lighter than you were painting it. And you're going to have to repeat it again. That's what watercolor does. Um, when the paint, when the, wa when the paper is wet, everything seems darker. So take your time building up that texture. Um, if you really take the time to layer your colors over one another, you get more dimension and the, the object will look more solid. And then we go back to our blues and greens and yellows. That's why my pans get dirty is because I just pick up paint without cleaning the brush first. Which is okay, you just have to be aware that you're doing that so that you don't inadvertently paint um, m a mess onto your painting. That looks good. Um, let's keep going with the texturing. And it would help if I let this dry a bit before continuing painting. But sometimes I'm just too impatient to wait. Haha. <laughs> And I don't want to go too far with these colors into this highlight, highlight area. Um, green, and let's do this. No, it needs to be stronger. 
that's it. Very light strokes to suggest those little hairs. And you might want to use a smaller brush for this, but you can, I think it's good practice to just limit yourself to one brush first. And soften some of the yolks with water. Alright. I think that looks good. Um, maybe darker in the middle here. And I haven't started on any deep shadows yet. Just building up texture right now. And would help speed up the, this kind of painting, um, doing all of these little strokes. Like when I'm painting fur, I like to paint to classical guitar music because it matches the strokes. Like every pluck of the string, strings on the guitar, um... This is like one movement with my brush. I'm doing one stroke. And that gets me into a rhythm. Just some extra advice. If you're considering painting while listening to music. I like that. I like that. I like that. Um, still darker here. And yeah, I think the fuzz is coming out. It's starting to show as fuzz. So a very different response of light on a non-reflective surface. So let's do some blue. Here. No, it needed to be darker. Mm-hmm. Mm. What else can we do here? We can add some more green up here. Get rid of that smoothness. To 
just do random little strokes. Even into this brown area here. Mm. And down here too. Smooth some of those strokes again with water. Okay, that's okay. Let's do the dark part here. That is... We could go blue, but let's do a paint gray with blue on that shadow. It does a lot, it helps a lot to suggest fuzz when you know that it's a tennis ball. If you have that groove and you know what a tennis ball is supposed to feel like, just by drawing that groove that goes down he around here and down here, I would have to do less to suggest the fuzz, the fuzziness of this ball, because you would already have um, a reference in your head of what that's supposed to feel like. So that's why I'm trying to avoid making things easy for me and painting in that groove, because that's just going to make it obvious that there's supposed to be a fuzzy texture on this ball, if that makes sense at all, I hope. I hope. Uh, <laughs> And so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to paint the texture and try to build up that feel of fuzziness. Blend slightly. So I'm using clean water to kind of smooth things over a bit. Mm -hmm. What else can we do here? Let's go back to pure yellow. Okay, it's supposed to be a fuzzy ball. Does that look fuzzy to you? <laughs> Well, obviously it has some kind of texture. Mm 
Okay, let's see here. Let's go with a strong orange here. So layering, lots and lots of layering. And again, if you're patient with it, your form, your form is going to look much more solid. So be careful not to get tunnel vision. Um, I mean, sometimes we tend to stare at something for so long. We see the little details and then we forget to step back and see everything as a whole. So if I'm painting these small hairs, I might just forget to check if these little hairs are supposed to be or where they are supposed to be so once in a while just want to stop pull back look at what you're doing from a distance and assess So it's starting to look fuzzy. And I'm going to go with a strong blue here. Do we have the fuzz? I think we do. The fuzz. Let's break this up over here. That's fine. Let's use some clean water, smooth things over. Okay, let's paint more of this shadow. And then let's paint the cast shadow. Maybe that's going to help us. Um 
spot what we need to work on. And the cast shadow on this ball is blue and a very dark blue is what I can see on the reference photo. Okay, I think we can see the fuzz, yeah? Yeah, we can. Underneath the ball, the shadow is somewhat warmer. Here. The shadow is... M there's more red in the shadow. So shadows can be warm and shadows can be cool. And then this shadow goes from cool, oh well, sorry, it goes from warm, and then it goes to being cool. There's your cool. And just some more fuzz underneath here. That's not so bad. Okay, there's slight, a very slight blue outline, blue-green outline. Is it? Is it a fuzzy ball? <laughs> fuzzy ball. Alright, let's see. Let's let that dry for just a few minutes. Okay, so I want to go way darker over here. Way dark. Let's go with some blue. Let's mix the blue and the red. might be too strong. Wait. More red. Like I said, I'm figuring this out. But I need more dark. More dark. So that this starts to brighten up.
Okay, so I took a few minutes to look away from the fuzzy ball because I wasn't seeing um, what I was doing anymore. But now that I'm, I came back to it with kind of a refreshed perspective, I can see that I'm going in the right direction here. So that's good. And of course, you don't have to be as detailed as this, but we are learning about texture and how to paint light and shadow. So just for this exercise, I try to be as detailed as possible. And once you've learned how to do that, you can get more flexible with how you render things. And I think I can see the fuzziness now. Oops. <laughs> kind of a mistake there. Clean your brush. Blend that out. Let's go into this shadow again. And it took me <laughs> about an hour to paint this fuzzy ball. Which is kind of ridiculous, but it's commitment to detail. Okay, okay. Are we okay? I think I'm about done with this fuzzy ball. Which I will not call a tennis ball. Okay, is that it? Wait. Let's do some... Something underneath here has to be a little darker. Okay, I think I will call my fuzzy ball done. Well, wait, can't help it. This has to go dark. All right, yeah, let's finish there. That was a pretty boring exercise. <laughs> Am I happy with this? Yeah, I'll say I'm happy with this. Um, I may, may still touch on this once I see it dry. When it's dried. Um, 
but for now I'm gonna call that done and we're going to move on to the next sphere okay so I'm looking at the fuzzy ball that I painted next to the tennis ball that's my reference photo and I'm pretty happy with the result this could be a little darker still um yeah over here could have some more darkness I painted in a suggestion of the background just so that um, I can see the ball in an environment um, and so that this shadow makes more sense to me and overall I'm happy with the result uh, so again the reason why I chose not to do that tennis that groove on the ball that you can see on the ball is because that would have made it too easy for me to understand the texture of the ball I wanted it, this to be an exercise where um, I can create the texture and let the viewer feel that texture without having that reference that this is a tennis ball and it's supposed to be fuzzy so I hope that makes sense and we're going to go to the next one